Well, hello and welcome to Easter Sunday at St. Clement's. My name is Mark and I'm one of the pastors here at church. And it's a privilege and an honour to be able to gather with you together on this very special day, a day where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Uh, At St. Clement's, we often start our services uh, with a line of encouragement from me where you then repeat to me the second line. And even though I can't hear you today, I still want to encourage you to repeat or say together the second line that's on the screen. And so, the Lord be with you. Uh, It's wonderful on Easter Sunday that we also say something else straight after this. Uh, And for the last few years, as I've been leading the Easter Sunday services at St. Clement's, I've loved being able to hear your response as you declare, He is risen indeed. And then we say hallelujah together. So let's continue together and and say this. Christ is risen. You say he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time it is to be able to gather and praise God together. Let's open our time in prayer and then we'll start with some songs after that. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that Jesus has been risen from the dead. Thank you for the opportunity we've got to celebrate that today and to be able to declare the goodness of the gospel and the hope that we have because of Jesus' resurrection. So guide our hearts, guide our ears so that everything that happens today will be for your glory and in celebration of the victory Christ has won. Amen. Well, let's continue this time together uh, by standing or sitting and having a time where we can sing praises to God together. Hey church, happy Easter, hey? Actually, it did occur to me, how can we say happy Easter in the midst of a pandemic and all the fear and stuff that that brings? Probably easier to say and more powerful, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that's why it's a happy Easter, no matter what the time, no matter what the circumstance. I hope you're having a happy Easter this morning around your home and family tables. Hope you're with someone. But even if not, Jesus, at the end of his time on earth, says to his disciples, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And it is typical of Jesus when he gives us an instruction or a firm directive. He backs it up with a personal promise. That's the saviour that we serve because he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And because of that, I can say with some confidence, everybody, church, family, my brothers and sisters, happy Easter. You gonna sing with me? Come on, church. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my God. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Oh, my hope is in Him alone. Go again, come on. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. I do. He's my Lord. He's my God. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Oh, my hope is in Him alone. What endless joy I find when I shout, I am His, and tell the world that He is mine. What unexplainable peace. Surrender my life to a God who loves me. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Oh my, He's my Lord, He's my God. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Oh my hope, oh my hope is in Him alone. I was created for this. 
To ever trust and believe in someone greater than me So on this rock I will stand I will shout unashamed my Savior's glorious name I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus Come on! He's my Lord, He's my God Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus Oh, my hope, yes, sir, is in Him alone I love to say it, I love to say it I love to shout it, I will declare it I believe in Jesus I love to say it to shout it, I will declare it. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. He's my Lord. Clap along. He's my God. You're only at home by yourselves. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in. Oh, your kids are gonna laugh. Oh, my hope is in Him alone. I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my God. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in Jesus. Oh, my hope is in Him alone. Oh, my hope <coughs> is in Him alone. Oh, my hope is in Him. the shadow of death Jesus reigns over every storm and every fiery test including the virus Jesus reigns over the cross and the power of hell he reigns in the valley of the shadow of death you reign storm and fiery test you reign over the cross and the path of hell you reign inside the loneliest prison cell you reign In the end, 
when it all comes down your rain What on earth are you doing out here? You're boys and girls. This is no place for children. Go home immediately. What? You are in your home still watching me? It makes no sense at all. I shall simply ignore you and keep on walking. Oh, boy, oh boy, the day I've had. Well, if you're going to walk with me, I'll introduce myself. Good day, children. My name is... Roman the guard. Yes, I know. Roman guard. Roman empire. Roman. Ha, ha, ha. It's so funny your name's Roman being in the... Ro I've been teased all the way through my childhood and it wasn't very funny and it wasn't very nice. And, and well, now I'm a very big, important guard with a very big, important looking helmet so nobody can tease me. I'll poke them in the bottom with my very oversized spear, which I've lost because it's been a very stressful three days. Ha! Oh. I'm spitting too. Do you know, my superior said, Roman, we would like you to oversee the crucifixion of a very naughty criminal. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. So off I went and I oversaw the crucifixion of this very naughty... Well, he wasn't even that naughty because he was actually quite nice. When we crucify people, well, normally they scream all sorts of nasty things that, well, I can't tell you what they scream because you'd blush and I'd blush and this is a children's show and, well, that's not okay. But anyway, not this Jesus character. He was calm and quiet and dignified and spoke kindly to the people below him and then when he died, he screamed forth to his father in heaven and the sky turned black and a ripping noise filled the air. And I said to myself, surely this man was the son of God. And as, as if that wasn't stressful and, and traumatic enough, my superior said, Roman, we want you to go and protect the tomb to make sure that those rapscallion followers of him, his disciples, weren't going to steal his body and pretend that he'd risen from the dead. No, no, I would not have that happen. So I went there with my most trusted of guards and we stood guard beside the tomb and, uh, well, for two and a half days it went splendidly, thanks for asking. And um, that very early this morning, we were standing there in the pre-dawn darkness and I looked up and behold, and lo, lo and behold, however it goes, these two very strange characters with fiery hair and and glowing white clothes came walking towards us and it was, it was very, very scary, I'll have you know. If, if underwear had been invented, I, I would have soiled my underwear, but they haven't and I didn't. And, and I stood there, many of the other guards were, they screamed like girls and ran away, but not me. I screamed like a girl and stood exactly where I was, which might not sound brave, but given the circumstances, it was very brave, I'll have you know, boys and girls. And, uh, and well, there I was screaming like a girl with my... Well, I fainted, boys and girls, out like a light. Who knew that was possible? And there I was, and I awoke not long ago, 
and I looked up and those two glowing fellows were sitting upon the tomb and they're walking away from me. Well, I never. It was that Jesus character. Boys and girls, I don't know what's going on, but all I know is Jesus of Nazareth. Well, we killed him and now, now he's alive. And I've lost my spear and I must find it. Good day. Happy Easter Sunday to everyone in our St. Clement's family. Tuned into our online church service today. I'm so grateful to be able to lead us in prayer today. And I ask that you bow your heads with me in prayer. Thank you. Father, we acknowledge that so much has changed in our world in the last few weeks. But we thank you that you have remained the same. Yesterday, today and tomorrow. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to experience life on earth as we do, to feel loss and pain as we do, to be tempted and resist this temptation as we strive to do each day. Thank you, Father, for sacrificing your son Jesus, for spilling his blood on the cross so that we could be forgiven for all of our transgressions. Thank you, Father, for allowing your son Jesus to take upon him our sins the heavy load of our guilt that he was unworthy of carrying. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to be raised to life, to fulfill the faithful promises you made to us. Father, we are unworthy and forever grateful for the outpouring of your love to us. May we remember your promises this Easter with bread and with wine, symbolizing the broken body and the redeeming blood of your son Jesus allowing us to approach you directly and connect with you intimately. And so we pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be glorified and exalted in the midst of the crisis that surrounds us. Your kingdom come to earth by the works of our hands and our hearts as your faithful servants. Father God, may your will be done in our lives, our workplaces, our communities, in our country and in countries across the world. Provide for us our daily bread, that we may in turn bless our neighbours, friends and loved ones with provisions in their times of need. Forgive us of any sins and strengthen us in these confusing times where Satan may want to get a foothold into our lives. Deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we are so humbled by your power and your glory. Father God, we pray for your miracle intervention into curbing the spread of this current insidious viral disease and the many other illnesses and diseases that exist in our broken world. Bring comfort to any who are currently living with any illnesses or diseases. May each one experience your personal presence in their lives. Support loved ones who feel helpless to those close to them that are experiencing medical issues. May they come to see your glory and miracles through healing and understanding. Father, for your children that have recently experienced loss, we ask that you carry them through their grief and grant them a peace that transcends human understanding. Jesus, we pray for release of your healing and blessings upon members of our church family and specifically of those who have placed their names at your feet, namely Alison, Archie, Beck, the Bennett family, Beverly, Carolyn, Dawn, Franz, Jeff, Helen, John, Fiona, Marie, Margaret, Margaret, Michael, Nathaniel, Oscar, Peter, Pete, Susan, Wendy and Wendy. Holy Spirit, we pray for you to occupy any of our idle thoughts and ways in these times of isolation and encourage us to use this time wisely to grow in empathy, love and consideration for others. Lord our God, make known your will to the leadership of our church as they strive to continue the works of the church in these isolated and uncertain times. 
Father, draw them near to you as you whisper your great name and the desires of your heart to them. Encourage Pete and Greg, Mark and Nick to remain focused on you as you reveal your ways to them on how best to care for the church. Father, we look forward to gathering again as a church family united under one roof, able to see and connect with our family in Christ. But in the meantime, we will, as is mentioned in Philippians 4, fix our eyes on Jesus and keep our thoughts continually fixed on all that is real, admirable, honourable, beautiful, respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And we will rejoice in the Lord always until that day finally arrives. Thank you, Father, that our joy is not found in our circumstances, but in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Well, we pick up the story on Easter Sunday afternoon, when Cleopas and his companion exit the western gate of Jerusalem and go to a town called Emmaus. They walk along the road dejected. They walk along the road with shoulders drooped and heads down, dejected. There's no spring in their step. And as they walk along and talk, a stranger comes and joins them. There's nothing particularly startling about the stranger, just a fellow traveller. And as they walk along and they enter into some conversation, the traveller asks the question, what are you guys talking about? Cleopas says, you've got to be kidding. Have you been living under a rock? You see, Jerusalem is awash with this news about Jesus and his resurrection. It's the big controversy. It's the big political intrigue. Rumours abound. Everyone is talking about it. And today, well, today there's another twist in the story because apparently Jesus' body is missing. There's all sorts of rumours about what's happening. There's even a rumour that Jesus is alive. And so Cleopas says to this stranger, are you like the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about these things? The stranger says, what things? And so Cleopas and his companion explain what has been going on. And this is what he says. Luke 24 verse 19. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. 
In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they'd seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. The upshot of all this is that Cleopas and his companion are despondent and confused. They're despondent because they had hoped that Jesus was going to boot out the Romans. Despondent because they'd hoped that Jesus would bring in God's reign on earth. But now that's, that's all over. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was nailed to a cross. All their hopes are shattered. And they're also confused because the women have come back with this crazy story that Jesus' body is no longer there and they'd seen him alive. I mean, what's going on? What's happened to Jesus' body? What has happened to Jesus? The three men continue to walk along the road to Emmaus, spend some time in quiet, until finally the stranger says something very, very odd. He says, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken Did not the Messiah have to suffer and after that to enter into his glory? And then for the next two hours, the stranger gives Cleopas and his companion a Bible lesson. He takes them through the Old Testament scriptures which speak about the coming of the Messiah. He takes them to passages which speak about how the Messiah must suffer. Perhaps he took them to Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we are considered punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The stranger goes to passages in the Old Testament which speak about how the Messiah must suffer. And then he takes them to passages which speak about the glorification, the new life that this Messiah will enjoy. Perhaps he went to Psalm number 16, verses 9 to 11. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you did not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. As Cleopas and his friend hear these scriptures from the Bible, this little spark of hope that was almost extinguished back two days ago on Good Friday becomes alive again. The flicker starts again. Could this be true? Could Jesus really be the Messiah? Could Jesus really have risen from the dead? It's getting late and the sun is beginning to set as they enter into the town of Emmaus. Their friend seems to want to continue on down the road, but there's something about this man that they want to hear more of. And so they invite him to come and share some food with them. This stranger seems so clueless to begin with, and yet now everything he says seems to make so much sense. So they urge him, they say, you're going to come and stay with us. Let's have some dinner together. Come and eat with us. And there they are at the table. The stranger picks up a loaf of bread and tears the bread 
thanks God and gives them a peace. And suddenly they realise who it is that they are speaking to. This is not just some Bible scholar. This is not just some stranger. This is the risen Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen from the dead. But before they have a chance to jump in the air and celebrate and and hug him, he's gone. Just as soon as he arrived, he is now gone. He'd been with them all the way. He'd been with them travelling all the way and they hadn't been able to see. But now they can see. Now their eyes are open. Suddenly he disappears and they are overwhelmed with confusion and with joy. They say to each other, were not our hearts burning within us when we were on the road and he opened the scriptures to us? Burning hearts. This little spark of hope that was almost extinguished on Friday is now burning in their hearts. For they know now for sure that Jesus is alive. That love is stronger than death. That forgiveness is available. That eternity is beckoning. Despite how it looked, God is in control. Despite how it looked, God was making a way. Despite how it looked, God was offering salvation to the world. Cleopas and his companion have no idea how this story will end, but they've got this hope that's burning in their hearts. They know that Jesus is alive and this hope changes everything. I don't know what hopes you had for 2020, but I do know this pandemic has shattered a lot of dreams. One of my sons is doing year 12 this year and it's been thrown into disarray. How do you study via Zoom? How do you stay motivated? Life's become complicated, hasn't it? And if it's complicated for us, just imagine how complicated it might be for those Overseas in developing countries where social isolation isn't even an option. Many people have lost their spark. Many people have lost their jobs. Many others have lost loved ones. This year, many people have had their dreams shattered. But friends, Jesus offers us hope. Hope that can burn in our hearts. Even in the midst of weakness and confusion, Jesus offers us hope. Life can be so fragile. Life can be so brittle. If there's anything this pandemic has taught us, it is that life hangs on a thin thread. But into this fragility, Jesus speaks Death wasn't the end for him. He conquered death. And now he promises to give life to all who are connected to him. Jesus promises eternal life to all who would believe in him. Jesus offers a life beyond the grave to all who would believe. Jesus speaks hope. The Apostle Peter speaks about this hope in 1 Peter 1 verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Jesus' resurrection promises us a life beyond the grave that is sure and certain and secure. Jesus' resurrection gives us an inheritance that will never perish, spoil or fade. Kept. Guaranteed. The Apostle Paul also talks about this resurrection promise. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 and 5. 
the Apostle Paul says this, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Jesus' resurrection promises us a life beyond this earthly tent, guaranteed, kept, safe and secure. Jesus doesn't promise us an easy life. He doesn't promise us a life that's free of stress or worry or concern. For believers, there's still plenty of stress and confusion and difficulty. But what a difference it makes to know that our future is secure. That even in the midst of questions and confusion and uncertainty, believers have this hope that burns in their hearts, a hope that is sure and certain and secure. Friends, I want to urge you today to cling on to Jesus. Jesus is no longer dead. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen from the dead. Place your trust in him. Put all your faith in him. Cling on to Jesus and the hope that he offers. For everyone who believes is given a new life. For everyone who believes is given a living hope. Everyone who believes is given an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Put your hope in him. Let's pray. Our loving God, we thank you so much that you raised our Lord Jesus from the dead. We thank you, Jesus, that you are alive, that you are reigning, that you are our King. Help us today, Jesus, to trust in you in the midst of it all. Help us to put our faith in you. Help us to cling on to you. Help us to put our hope completely in you. Fill us with your spirit. Guide us now by your spirit so we can live in these confusing and anxious times. And remind us always that your resurrection means security for us now and forevermore. And we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I surrender my life to find it in you, Jesus. And I receive the gift you give your life for. Mike.
Well, friends, in a moment, we are going to share in communion together. We're going to remember Jesus' death for us and Jesus' resurrection for us. And we have before us some bread and some wine, or at home you might have some bread or some grape juice. I encourage you to have that ready for us as we share in this special time together. Let's thank God together. We give you thanks and praise, almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you've created all things. You sent Him from heaven to take our flesh, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He was revealed as your Son. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows, to give up his life upon the cross, that he might break the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And so now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that Jesus was handed over to suffering and death, he took bread 
and he gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which will be given for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood which will be shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Father, gather into one all who share in this meal, filling them with your spirit and confirming them in truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through Jesus, your servant. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Well, friends, I hope you have your bread and juice or wine ready now. We're going to eat and we're going to drink now in remembrance of Jesus. Jesus who died for us and Jesus who rose again. Please take a piece of bread. Let's remember Jesus. Let's say together, remember Jesus. Please tape your grape juice or wine. Let's remember Jesus. Remember Jesus. Friends, let's take a moment in reflection as we listen to this beautiful song. Let's join now in the prayer that our Lord Jesus himself taught us to pray. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, church, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you can have joy in your lounge room. I'm trying to have some here. Here we go. Here we go. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered. 
covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. Come on. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. I my soul. Come on, sing. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain, my pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. Conquer the grave, my redeemer lives, my redeemer lives, my redeemer lives, my redeemer lives. You lift my burdens, you lift my burdens, and I'll rise with you. I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. See church. See y'all soon. Our Redeemer certainly does live. In 1 Peter chapter 1, we read these verses. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It's a day of great joy, a day of great hope. It's a day of victory. It's a day to celebrate with others. I'm not sure where you are right now and and who you're with right now, but I want to encourage you this Easter, to keep connecting with your community, with your Christian brothers and sisters, and with those who don't know Jesus as well. I want to encourage you to be God's voice in this time of trial, because through God, we know we have victory over all things, even Christ, who has been risen from the dead. Today, I want to also encourage you, if you're a member of St. Clemens, uh, to continue giving to the work of the gospel, uh, both in our local community and around the world. Now, there's a button on the website just below this video to give you and to help give you instructions around how to do that. But thank you so much for gathering together with us. And I pray that God would continue to bless you and give you great joy as you celebrate the hope of the resurrection that we see in Christ. God be with you.